Everybody, I'm Daniel Likis, and welcome to Food 101. Food, 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 people, let's talk about food. And today, I have my special guest. She's the general manager of Chartwell Willow. Hello, thank you for having me, Daniel. Thank you, Miss Nikki. And it's been a long time that I want you to be my guest again because I have a lot of listeners that really empower through your message. Oh, good. Well, that's great to hear. Yes. And let's talk about your favorite appetizer. Oh, wow. Is it Belgian appetizer? It, it is. I, 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 it's a kind of a theme. I grew up with Belgian food. My mother's yes. uh, Belgian. Um, so... I don't know. I had a hard time with an appetizer um, because a lot of the food can be a main course and a starter. But yes. we're going to go with um, filet mexicain. So say it again. Filet mexicain. Oh, parle vous français. This appetizer mm-hmm. is famous not only in Belgium or all over the world. Uh, Dutch people would eat it too. Um, it's very a uh, Belgian thing. Um, mm. It's from Belgium. You can find it in most butcher shops, actually. Okay. My grandpa uh, used to make his own. Um, it's a common food. So mm. it is, a lot of people would say it's like a steak tartare. It is raw meat. So it is actually finer ground than a steak tartare. It's a ground sort of beef. Mm-hmm. Um, and you would fine grind that up with egg yolk, mayo, uh, Worcestershire sauce. Yeah. And everybody's feels a little different. That's why if you go and get the Fidea Medicam Plavare in the butchery, sometimes you'll see it like more red or more orange. Mm-hmm. It depends on what your butcher has put into it. But we always did... Um, like cayenne and paprika, and we always put capers in our. Oh. Effort. But it's amazing, and it's so good, and you spread that on a beautiful piece of crusty baguette. Oh, it's amazing, Daniel. Oh my goodness, how you can say it again in uh, uh, France? Delicious. Delicious. Yes. Yeah. Well, we can say I would say magnifique. C'est très magnifique. Can I use different kind of meat? Uh, I would be very careful with that. I, it's yeah. a raw meat, meat. right? Yeah. So, and I know in North America that's less done. Um, but you want to make sure you're getting a good quality meat. meat yeah. Um, I would say beef would be the preferable safe way to do it. Yes, yeah. in the preferable way. I haven't ever seen it done with another raw meat, meat. but uh, maybe maybe in another culture they do something similar. Definitely. Um, but yeah, definitely it's it's amazing. Daniel and uh, I grew up with it and it's just very comforting to have so if you want mm-hmm. to rate this dish 1 to 10 where is it oh well I'm gonna give it a 10 because I love it um, yes. I could eat it every day um, I would say for anyone if you are a fan of like a pate uh-huh. um, foie gras. a foie gras a pate something you know with that you're not afraid to try something new steak tartare or beef carpaccio, um, you know what, I would say give it a try. If you're in Belgium and you're visiting, go to a butcher shop, you yeah. can definitely get some. It's wonderful. So in Canada, do you mm-hmm. think it's available for that kind of I would say meat? no. We tend to be very frightened <laughs> of raw meat. I don't know why. I mean, I do know why, but yeah. um, uh, you would probably have to make it on your own. Oh, uh, yeah. But just if you're going to do that, make sure you get a really good quality beef. Fresh, yes beef to do it with so what will be your advice for the beginner Mm -hmm. that the want to try this dish um i mean go to belgium i would say (laughs) everybody should go to belgium um no if a beginner cook i mean i'm sure you can look it up online um you know i learned it because my mother made it and my grandfather made it yes um but it is a very simple dish as long as you are getting good ingredients Mm -hmm. it's a simple dish to make Okay. And it's a very um, rustic, it's a home dish. So it's not yeah. something that you need to eat in a fancy setting or a fancy restaurant. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Comparing to tartar and this dish, what the big difference? Well, um, tartar is, is thicker chunks, right? So tartar oh. is usually chunkier with plavelle, um sorry, filet américain. We call it too. Um, it's, uh, it's more of a paste, like, because it's more ground up. Yes. Um, with more spices. 
in the meat. Yeah. Okay. Do we need to marinate? No, uh, well, I mean, you, you can leave it for a while in your fridge. Like, you can prepare it mm -hmm. and then leave it and have it over the, a couple of days. Um, but it's the Worcestershire sauce and the spices that you're putting in that kind of make it good. I usually would, you know, I've ate it right away. I've ate it right away. <laughs> you can't wait. Um, but, you yeah, know, it's always good the day after, too, yeah. So if you describe the taste of mm -hmm. this dish, what is it? I think it is just very savory like it has a really beautiful savory rich taste to it mm. because you have egg yolk in it and you have yes. mayonnaise and mustard like as everything should have mustard in it <laughs> um you know i so you get a really nice rich taste to it very nice yes, yes. so do you think mm -hmm. this is uh good for elderly people i mean i i think it would be something new. I think if you're an adventurous eater and you haven't had it before and, you know, you might be, you know, a Canadian born or yeah. North American family, yeah. it might seem a little strange for you, but I do think it's for everybody. And uh, we used to eat it in sandwiches, just like a, a sandwich with spinning. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's really good. <laughs> Give it a go. I think everybody will love it if they eat it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so, Miss uh, Nikki, mm -hmm. can you invite those people to eat this dish? Yes, please try it. Um, I'm a big believer in trying foods, um, new foods. Yes. Um, my mother came here only knowing Belgian cuisine and was very excited to try different cuisines um, in Canada because we have a lot of immigrant populations, and that's one of the great things about living here. And she passed that on to us. So um, very important to try other people's food because it's part of their culture yeah. and it's part of their story. And I think even when I travel, I really want to try local foods because I think it's how you get to know people and get to know their culture because there's always stories behind what you're eating. Wow. Yeah. Very well said, Miss Nikki. I talk about how women empowerment. Women empowerment. So give us your five tips to empower women? Um, I would say everybody should be a feminist. So mm. I believe that strongly. I think some people have very negative connotations to the word feminism, but um, really it is just the support of women to have equal rights and opportunities. And I think it's so important that men join us in that journey. Um, it needs to be everyone. Um, we need that partnership and that support. Yes. So I would say that, that, you know, it's everybody's battle, it's everybody's journey. Um, second, I would say always look to the younger people. So always support people who are younger than you. And I would say that for, for everybody, um, but for women in higher positions, you know, don't treat other women as your competition. Always give them a hand up. Um, I think it's really important to recognize that that's where you once were, you know, and even as far as our, our young children to support them and when they see somebody and they're saying, I want to do that, to be like, yes, you can. Um, I think too often there's no's or what you can't do and that just shuts people down right away and we need more women getting interested and in finding out what they can do and reaching for higher goals. Um, so I think that's really important. Sure. Um, three, if you see something, say something. If you see someone, if it is your friend um, making a comment that's inappropriate, if you see somebody discouraging or talking down to a woman, I, I think we need to be the ones to mention something. I know it's uncomfortable and it's really hard sometimes, um, but that means the world right to correct somebody and say that's not okay it's not okay to say it it's not okay to be that way to a woman it's not okay to hold her back because she's a woman or to comment on maybe her clothing or her dress um so i think it's important for all of us to if we see something to say something about it yeah um number two i think those are such the most important key points like such a group I think we think about it too much as it's just women versus men and I hate when it gets like that because it's not about that. Sure. I, I think everyone needs to work together. Um, I think men are such a huge and important part of change. Mm -hmm. um, and I think there are so many wonderful men out there who are willing to be part of the change 
and we need to be having them as partners, right? Yes. Um, to be that. Um, I'm lucky. I work with you. I work with a lot of wonderful people who are very supportive yeah. um, and, and wonderful and treat me so well. I have had opportunities where I've been out in the world and people are more dismissive yeah. of me um, because I'm a woman. Um, but I've been fortunate because, like I said, I have wonderful people like you. I have colleagues who are the ones who stand up and say, hey, you can't talk to her that way. Sure. Um, I mean, I will always say don't talk to me that way, too. Um, True. But I think it's important for us all to be allies and yes. to work together, right? Yes. Yeah. And I think the government of Canada, especially Justin Trudeau, yeah. is uh, promoting women empowerment. Yes. Especially on the government. And I think that's important. And I think what people, some people don't like it. I get that. Yes. Um, but the problem is women need more opportunities to help in making decisions. Because for a long time, and in, in the not so distant past, yes. it was not acceptable. Um, and it was not considered okay for women to be in power positions. Um, and even recently, like when you notice political turns, you have a lot of people commenting on female politicians, and the first thing they comment on are not even their politics, but what they're wearing. Yes. And it's not something that's done with men. And I feel like we need to recognize that in our culture and say, why am I doing that? Like, why is that the place I go? Why am I looking at her differently just because she's a woman? I'm not going to say that women are perfect. You shouldn't like every woman politician just because she's a woman. Um, just yeah. like you shouldn't like every male politician just yes. because they're a male. But yeah. that's what we're trying to get to is is making choices based on your platform and not your gender and giving women the opportunities to be the lawmakers and to make decisions, right? Yes. Yeah. So in one word, Miss Nikki, how you describe women? Oh, I don't think you can describe women in one word. I okay, think five then. Five <laughs> words, no. Uh, you know what? I, I think it's women are so vast and so different, like men are so vast and so different, right? Yes. I, I don't think painting one gender with one brush yeah. is ever a good idea. There are women who are amazing and strong. I mean, I just saw on TikTok this amazing female power lifter, <laughs> yeah. and I was like, oh my, oh my God, God, she's <laughs> phenomenal. Yeah. And you know what? I think this is where we get into problems when we pigeonhole people into stereotypes. Mm. Women can be strong. Men can yeah. be sensitive. There's sure. nothing wrong. Yes. Um, I mean, look at for a long time, men weren't nurses because it was seen as a female job, and I yes. think that's not okay either. You know, we are allowed to have a full scope of human emotions we are allowed to be complex people outside of our genders um and i think that is the way to move forward and i think that's the best way for all of us to look at it true it's just like ego for each everyone exactly yeah. i i mean i know men get a lot you can't cry and i think that's such a toxic <laughs> way to look at things no it is you know yes. it's so toxic to think yes. like that because yes. we want people to be emotional Full, fulfilled people but then we're telling a whole gender if 50 percent of the population you can't experience emotion um so I, I think it's really important for us to realize that you know despite our genders we can be all sorts of things right true and they said 100 percent that uh if men is become become more emotional their life expectancy is more higher <laughs> right <laughs> yes so some men just not accept that come on let's be equal right mm -hmm. in terms of decision making in terms of uh make the world go round let's women be part of this society and you know i think that's it like you know um people have different experiences based on you know their gender their life everything that they've went through and i think having more diverse backgrounds more diverse um, genders, it can only create a better experience because you get more points of view, you get more opinions, you get more ideas. Yes. Um, so yeah, I think it's important. Um, I, I think all men, if you think women shouldn't be a part of decision making, shouldn't be a part of government, a, a woman gave birth to you. 
um, a woman raised you and helped shape you. Yeah. Um, I think that's pretty powerful. And yeah. maybe you need to have a, a look inside. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Let woman empower the world as a man doing right now. Yeah. Okay, shout out to the people listening in South Korea. Woo! My I, sister-in-law is from South Korea. I I, I have a ninety-eight percent in Incheon. Oh. Annyeonghaseyo. Annyeonghaseyo. Thank you so much, Miss Nikki. Thank you for your time. Oh, thank you, Daniel. It's <laughs> wonderful. And can we do it again? Uh, Probably if you have time. Of course. <laughs> More to come, people. See you soon.